We're going to plan to take your assessment next Monday. Monday. So what I'm looking at is the schedule got all goofed up with discovery days and stuff. So I was going to try to have us start your mastery this Friday, but I'd rather not rush things. Um, so I'm figuring out how this is going to flex and whether we might just take two class days to work on closure stuff or what we're going to do. Um, or honestly, we could watch a little bit more of one of those documentaries or something. But next week, I will be out on Friday. I have like three doctor's appointments. Optometrist, um, the skin doctor, whatever you call that, and then a well checked physical and like flu shot if I haven't gotten my flu shot yet. Dermatologist, yeah, thank you. Um, so I have multiple doctor's appointments, so I just ended up just taking the day so I can have time to do those things and not stress my colleagues out. So Mrs. Likens, who was in here before for you guys, um, I doubt she's going to watch the YouTube video. She was probably one of the older subs that you've had. She's like a retired teacher. Oh, she's, uh, she had hair up in here and she sat oh. there and didn't talk to us I essentially told her to just tell you guys to work and that she could trust you guys to work. So if she sat there and just hung out, that was probably what I told her to do. She didn't say um, yeah, well, I mean, you guys are kind of scary sometimes. Because honestly, no, 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 seriously. So listen to this. Hey, so I need you to hear this, especially with next week. Um, even though you'll be working on mastery, to a lot of adults, your math abilities are scary. Because it's better than theirs. Because if you don't practice something, you lose it. And a lot of adults do not continue practicing the math skills that they were doing in high school and or college if their career doesn't have them do that. So, for real, in a math setting, some adults are scary, you guys. Because your skills are like math. math. <laughs> now, like, go, yeah, I'm not going to win for a while. Like, you guys have... Yeah. 30 seconds, like, all of it. Yeah. Just didn't say anything. Just everyone sit, everyone sit down and just stand at the side. Or just be like, how do you find the zeros of a quadratic? <laughs> I want everyone like to come in and stand in a line. So, I'm bumping... Yeah. So, I'm bumping that to next week. Now, hold up. We will start that Thursday. So, I'll be here. Okay, we'll start that Thursday. I'll take whatever questions you guys got. I will be here. But then Friday, I won't. And the, the substitute teacher and guest teacher can't really answer those questions Friday. Right? Because, like, yeah. So, please... And that, and I'll leave like if, if we get totally done, and if there's more documentary walk around, I'll leave her a link and some other stuff that the whole class ends up finished, so it's not just like awkward. Or you guys can mind trap. We'll talk about that next week. Um, but all that to say, no stress about this stuff being due this week. But next week, I will be. Can we not use the book? I will be on Thursday. So get this in your head and plan it. Thursday, we will collect the chapter four homework. Now, if you're totally done with stuff before then, like if you had it done by Friday, you can turn it in. I don't care. But I'm not going to care about it until next week when I actually like, collect them. Is this um, Thursday or next Thursday? Next, this Thursday, we still have this chapter's homework. So next Thursday, I'm going to collect all of chapter four. So it should be in order, right? 411 <coughs> up through foreclosure. 411 should be on top. We need to get you guys used to how things are going to be expected to like be done. I, I don't even want to say like in the real world, but just like you can only go in order chronologically, oldest to um, most recent. And name, dates, those things, we're going to start to be like more particular with that grading. Yeah. Chris can put that away once you find this stuff and finish. Because now we're actually going to be. Yeah. I like redo all the homework from like yesterday and. If you want, it's good practice. Because I have to go through. I have looked at well, this is one of those things where organization is part of what we're teaching you guys. If you've lost stuff, you, you are going to need to no, do it again or something to do it again. So you never lose your laptop. That's right? Have you never lost your laptop? So you can obviously... Yeah, that is funny. You can obviously keep track of something, right? You've decided your laptop's important. I'm going to keep track of it. You have to start doing that with all things academic. So, I'm not talking just to Satya, because this has probably happened to multiple of you, if you can't keep track of assignments for a chapter worth of time, that's something you need to work on, right? That's a growth opportunity for you. So, that might bite you in the butt, but you got the weekend to get it taken care of. All right.
So, we've been talking trade. Now, if I ever had the opportunity to go to Yosemite, I would be there in a heartbeat. Yosemite is known as the climbing Mecca, which if you know what Mecca is, it's... We can Mecca song. No. no. <laughs> Mecca. What is a Mecca? Or literally the place. The sacred yeah. place. The sacred, the sacred place. place. It's, it's, yeah, it's sacred ground where the people go to essentially like worship and or to be in that sacred area. Yosemite is the climbing Mecca. So, seriously. There are more <laughs> walls to climb and routes to climb in Yosemite than anywhere else. And like, so somebody posted the other day, now that we've already talked about Reddit, on our climbing, uh, a night picture, and there are about 20 different people climbing on the wall, because the, the walls are huge. So, David and Emily are climbing El Cap, which is one of the most famous walls at Yosemite. So David's on the ground holding the rope attached to a carabiner, which would actually be through a belay device. Come on! Um, and it's not a pulley at all, but okay. Um, so Emily's climbing, right? So Emily stops to rest, and David wonders how high she is. This is legitimate. People post pictures, and they're like, hey, how high was I? And you've got to do the trick, right? That's the easiest way. So the rope is attached to his waist about three feet off the ground, because you know, that's where your waist is. And then he has let out 48 feet of rope, which, okay. So this technically, because I, I can't take not dropping knowledge on you, this would be a quick draw which is two different carabiners you clip to the wall and then you clip your rope to. It is not a pulley. Um, so 48 feet of rope, which goes up to the carabiner and then back down the wall to Emily's harness. Hmm. The rope at David's waist, if we draw a horizontal, makes a 55 degree angle of incline. He's standing 20 feet away from the face. How can we figure out how far up the wall she is? So what? Don't we know how much? Yeah, you can talk with each other. 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 Yeah, you can talk with each there's now and literally like rope will have markings because so this is one like danger thing about climbing if she was doing what you call lead climbing and taking the rope with her it would be going straight up the wall behind her if the belayer lets out past the halfway point of the rope you can't get the climber back to the ground there's not enough rope so genuinely ropes are marked with how like how much of the rope and there's always like a mark that says this is the middle stop like you're going past the danger zone so just so you're aware of why people would know how much rope has been let out. Who knows? What happens if the blender doesn't do his job? Uh, people die. It has happened. It's not really funny. But it's normally not because the blender had an issue. Um, it's something natural. This past year, multiple climbers have died at Yosemite because of um, shifts in rock. rock and a rock the size, a rock the size of a bus fell and actually killed the blender and the person on the wall. Survived, but then their belayer wasn't like it fell on the person on the bottom. So, real danger. So, how'd they get past the carabiner? They got past the carabiner. Oh. Mm -hmm. So, you can't use that 48 feet measurement. So, you always have different ropes and stuff with you that you could go direct in, which means you're not relying on anybody else. You put directly to the wall and you're just like attached to yourself. That's it. Mm -hmm. So, my friend Steve. I can show you his page if you want, or his Instagram or whatever. He built a van um, to quit his job and go out to Yosemite and live for a while, and now works taking climate expeditions. So he built his van? Like, converted it to a tiny home, essentially. So, like, you rip out all the back of it, you put in a bed and a kitchen area and everything else. And so he didn't build the van itself, but the whole inside structure. Um, so he made, like, a tiny home to go yeah, and live in Yosemite it. for a while. Um, if you're curious about this, look up Alex Honnold. Um, he's one of climbing's like top names, and he is like the most dedicated climber. Um, I think he's still technically like his parents' house is his home base, um, but he has a van that is like his house, so that he can park at the bottom of the rock and be there like when the sun rises. And get him. So, what function are we going to use relating what sides that we know? What do we what do we actually have available here, Chris? Tangent of 55 equals 
x over 20. So then we can figure out 20 times 50. x is 1. 28.56. Well, so what? 28.56. Can you get some verification on that? That is correct. That is my okay. that is so, correct. that's not the most important. What? No, no that's so high. That's not, um, yeah, you can take it. I'd rather you guys not take it. That's so high up the entirety of the Okay, I have to add three feet. Yeah, one more. So it's adding one foot. That, that's why I said that's not fair. By the way, this is this as well. So you have to add it. We gotta take this. Wait, do we have three feet tall? Oh, no, no, no. That's three feet. Okay. Oh, oh, that's three feet. Oh, can I just get it? Oh, now we go. 31.56 is not the answer. Do the rest of it too. Wait, what? Okay, work, work together. I want to see if you guys Wait, can process through this. What is it? Okay, well, um, I love these problems. So after you do that, you also have to find the actual hypotenuse. Yeah. Using um, and then you have to find sine or op. <laughs> Which would be um, 34.8. Cosine 55 equals 20 over um, uh, hypotenuse. You guys are awesome. And then, like, figure that out. Uh, I got 34.86. 34. Why did you write S S? Uh, now we have two different I have two different X's. I'll let it fly because it's two different colors, but that is gross. You can put hypotenuse with S S H. I'm, just, I'm letting it go. I'm just saying it's gross. Well, if we let new go up, it's, it's a variable. It's, 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 it's a hypotenuse. It's a cleft. A hypotenuse is 34.8689. So we can label hypotenuse. So you said 34.86, 34.9 if you want. I'm assuming that we subtract. You go for the same thing. I'll let you do it, Jake. Okay, and then I'll. It's rough. <laughs> and then it would be 45, uh, 40 You know, we don't have any right angles, do And you get 13.1311. Yeah. We can argue that we know it has to be perpendicular to the ground because yeah. if she because falls, she will hang straight. Hey, why did you subtract? And then you I actually don't want to grab it. it. And then it would be no. more like gravity. Uh, and then you would also mm -hmm. have to take. Found the opposite side, which is like twenty-eight. So wait, hold on. Let me back you up a second. How? There we go. Thirteen. I was about to say how much rope is between. What happens if the Earth turns? Now I want to make sure that we all know what's going on, not just Chris and Jacob. I know what's going on. You either got to put more of the eraser on, or you got to put your pen down. It's a little weird about how it decides what to do. All right, here's what's up to catch up those of us that didn't initially like recognize this. This, this is one of those really fun problems where we have to analyze what we have and what's actually useful. It is very similar to what you'll see on the ACT or SAT. So 48 is not a number we want to use right off the bat because it is the hypotenuse and part of a leg. So the first thing we did, I'm going to capture this so we can keep these values and then I'm going to clear it so we can fill them back in. First thing we did was we drew this triangle and we knew this was 55. We found this was 28.6. I'm rounding to the tenths, just deal with it. Then, then we figured out that this um, what, what we knew, sorry, we knew that this was a 20. Yeah. That's how we got our 28.6. Then we solved the hypotenuse because it's not 48. That is 34.9. Then, because we know that, we can figure out the length of rope that is here. Because we know 48 in total from his waist up to the quick draw down through the climber. So we do the subtraction, and we get what? 13.1. Then, because we just want, Levi, be honest and tell me if this makes sense when I'm done. Since we just want that section, this 28.6 was the whole thing. 
We then take away the 13.13. Although I added three first. Okay, we'll add three at some point. Well, we could add three to this and say only take away 10.1. Because this, is, so you can do it whenever. You can, you can add the three whenever. So this is, hey, chill. 15.5-ish, rounding to the tenths. And then we add, and she's about 18 feet up. Now that may not seem that high, but especially if you are lead climbing and you cannot put weight on the rope, 18 feet sure feels high when you look down like this and you're right. So it's 18 feet. Eight. Now those faces in Yosemite are thousands of feet. So this, just to hit you with more knowledge, because we have plenty of time for the math. Um, that like Yosemite is what is called multi-pitch climbing. A pitch is what you can climb with one of your ropes. So a multi-pitch would be Emily goes as high as she can because there's only so much rope that you have. Then Emily locks off against the wall, like you attach yourself to the wall, and then David climbs up while Emily belays from above. She's like pulling the rope up as he comes up. Then they both lock onto the wall, reset, and Emily climbs again while David belays her. And then same thing, she gets to a point, locks off, he follows. Each time you do that is one pitch. Wow. So when my friends like Steve will say, I did a seven pitch today, Jeez. that means up, stop, lock, belay, up, stop, like seven times. And then you have to come back down now. seven times. Yeah. Unless there's a way to hike down. At Yosemite, if you get all the way to the top, you can hike back down. Because once you top out, it's, so it's called half dome, because the rock on one side looks like this, and actually more dramatic depending where you look, in the back of it's like this. It's like a half dome, so you can hike down the back. Wait, how do you, like, how many pitches does this cost? Um, you should know I know I shouldn't. How many Oh, you fell over on. Uh, 23 pitches to get to the top. The, the grade of climbing goes from 9 to 12. 6 is where the grade starts, a 5.6, well 5.5 would be like the absolute easiest climb. 5.6 is really where the grading system starts. 5.15 is where the grading system stops at the most difficult. Have any of your friends gone to the top? Yeah. So see what I mean about the back of it, it's a real easy hike. So this is the standard route of El Cap. And there's a ledge right here that like you can stand on. Oh, man, we're going way off the lesson, but it's okay. I like that every time we get distracted, it's recorded how distracted we get. Oh, wait, how do you get, how do you get, um, Alex down? Alex, Alex, the best thing is watching the video in the back and seeing Joe. I know, I missed that. Off the back. <laughs> no, this is a professional <laughs> climber. So he climbed this face free solo, which means without rope. So at the end of it, look, he just has a chalk bag on. That's it. At the end of it, you have to walk across this dome to get to the last section, or sorry, this ledge, to get to the part where you can finish your climb. You have to walk this ledge. And he's just like, all right, I'll stop for a photo op. That, his book is amazing. If you are interested in like high adventure type stuff, um, I think I have his book. It might be at home. So Thousands of feet up, no rope. Yeah, if he falls, he's dead. That, he's dead. Yes, yeah, so if he falls, he's dead. Like, no question, pretty much. Unless he fell oh, just the perfect like, way. Somebody posted I'm this sure. picture earlier. They're like, all you meatheads and muscle buffs, whatever. This is what physical fitness looks like. Like, he's just super trim. He doesn't have a ton of ridiculous muscle or anything. Like, he's muscular, but he's just trim. He's one of the world's best climbers. Uh, oh, no rope? Bro. Stop it. No. Well, this is called deep water soloing. So if he falls, he just falls in water. Oh, so water. a lot of people do deep water soloing because it's not that dangerous because, you know, you fall in water. It's going to hurt. Stop. And then you can, like, base jump. Okay. So some climbers, when you get to the top, you base jump and you parachute your way back down. I would wing suit. That's I'm illegal. Sure that um, base jumping is illegal in this park, in Yosemite National Park. Um, you cannot base jump because it's so dangerous. Uh, a lot of people die. Why? Base Sorry. This is climbing. not a class about rock climbing, although we can do that at some point. All right, the Bungling Brothers Circus. Mm -hmm. Great name. Can I take gander as to why people climb? Oh, they clip anything. Anything that changes your flight path, you essentially like tumble out. 
Yeah. yeah. And so what were you going to guess? I was gonna they guess hit the ground. They get too close mm-hmm. to each other and then they collision. So normally, <laughs> and there's two different kinds of base jumping. There's like wingsuit to parachute, or exactly. there's just like immediate parachute. So the, uh, one of the guys that was wingsuiting went to cut a, uh, a gap and yeah. like just clipped it and just like just you, as soon as you touch anything, you just lose your flight. Like you start tumbling and it's over. You, you can't pull your chute thing because you're, you're rolling through the air. So, yeah, it gets serious. Um, think about your risk versus reward. I'm just staying at home and training. Maybe try wingsuiting at some point in my life. I would do it if it was like on the cliff <laughs> above the water. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. If you create an edge on top of a rock, it would be really hard because you'd have to go somewhere. Like to actually and practice. You know, climb this pool. Like, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, let's check out this problem. Center pole of the tent is 70 feet tall. A support cable needs to be attached to the top of the pole so that the cable forms a 60 degree angle with the ground to have enough tension for what it wants. How long will that cable be? So first, just like the problem we just looked at, check and see if there's any trap doors or any like um, interesting sections where the numbers are misleading. Then try to process this through. And if somebody wants to come up and solve it, once you guys take a couple minutes, um, that opportunity is available to us as well. And uh, it's a long term center, right? Center pole that holds the tent up is 70 feet tall. Support cable. Angle with the ground, right? Always check what angle they're giving you. Angle with the ground. Oh, this is that special thing. So ask yourself, is the leg we have the long leg or the short leg? Long leg, right? It's opposite the six leg. So the hypotenuse is double the short leg. Uh, if you go to mode, you can switch it from max print to classic. Wait, that would have been pretty fun. Yes, that's no, it's me. That's why I was thinking about it. I know. Mr. Hudson. I've cleared my calculator. Yeah, reminder if you clear the memory in your calculator, it resets to radians. Wait, Mr. Hudson. Yes. Can you just invert? um there's a few ways. So, if we know that to go from short side to long leg, we multiply by radical 3, we can just divide by radical 3 here. That's what it said. So, 70 divided by radical 3, well, you said invert, but 70 divided by radical 3, we're, we're inversing the process. I will agree with that. How much 40? Force to the hundredth place, because you know. So then we double. Once we know the thirty, we can also use. Actually, once we know the sixty and the seventy, we have a few options. Right? Um, we're going back to LCAP now that we're all afraid of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, we just talked about how how many people can die there. What are we even learning? How many have died? Trig, we're just we're just practicing our trick skills. Remember when like a week or two ago you were like, no trig. We're just making you more comfortable. But like, like how many people have died? Three days ago, I already know. I know, but we're just yeah, we'll send you that. We're so, okay, okay, trick pro, read this problem and solve it. I won't even set it up because then I give things away when I read it. Thanks, man. I just really want more copies. You're not going to solve this copy book. Everyone, everyone it. just stop. It's not your job. No, it's all of your <laughs> job. So you can confirm yeah, or deny. Yeah, you know, that, that <laughs> no, I'm just saying because like I have an entire unit of homework to do. Try for like two minutes on your own. Yeah, but it'll be so much easier. Now. No, two minutes on your own. What if I restart it every time somebody talks? <laughs> we'll never get there. Yeah. Refine it. So obviously, David or sorry, Nathan took a clinometer with him so he could determine the ten degree angle. Yeah. 
No joke, though. Photographers taking pictures of climbers up the wall will do things like that. Now, they normally use like technology, something better than the plastic climbers that, that we have. But once you tilt your camera, if your camera has like a degree meter on it, you can figure out how far up you had to point to see the person. So 10 degrees here. Let's see if this is practical, right? His angle at 11 a.m. is 10 degrees. Then his angle a half hour later is 25 degrees. Let's just figure it out. That's what we're going to figure out is how fast would you have to climb to make that happen. <laughs> but just what? maybe I have to solve that. There's how far they climb. It could be an easy section. It could be the 5.9 section where she's just chugging along, just going up the rock. He's also on a stool. It's not helping him. I'm already married, and that's illegal. <laughs> oh, by the way, Stephen, thank you very much for this. If you even knew that your mom dropped him off. <laughs> or actually, it is your handwriting. You obviously had to know. They are delicious. What are those? Uh, it's like pumpkin spice dark chocolate. Oh, yo, no, these So, yes. Now, let me tell you this. Alex Honnold, dude I just showed you, climbed 4,000 feet in four hours. So he was climbing a thousand vertical feet every hour. He started climbing fast. Yeah, we'll talk about that in just a second. So help me out then, Thomas. What did you do to figure out how high the climber is here? Um, well. Like what trick? I did tangent. Tangent? I did. Um, what? <laughs> You want to go C over 185 just for climber? No, X. Okay. Mm -hmm. What are we using? So, easy proportion, right? What do you get for your C? Uh, you get 32. What I, you was, add I was talking with Thomas. 32.62, and then we'd have to add two after that. So, 38. So, really. Alright, so that's at 11, right? Yeah. At 11. Change into purple. So then at 11.30, what do we have? Tangent of 25. He did not move his camera. So I'm going to say C sub 2, climber position 2, to start getting used to it. If we use the same variable, how can we differentiate? <laughs> so then, again, easy proportion. What eighty what? Eighty six point two seven. Oh wait, I'm hearing two eighty two or eighty six. Eighty six point two seven. 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 So ninety two. So let's figure out this climbing rate. She was at thirty eight point six. Went to 92.3. What's the difference between them? Divide that by how many? It's not 64. 92 minus 20. Oh, 28. What? I wrote 28. 28.28. 38.25. You get 38.25. Mm -hmm. Divided by five. Mm -hmm. Five. Mm -hmm. Round it. You forgot to add all the decimals. And then you divide by thirty. You get one point seven nine. So guys, 
20.7. Well, that was a minute. I can either hold on now. That's not very fast, actually. A, like 1.7 feet per minute? It's not very fast. The Alex guy went 3.3 inches, I believe. Nice. He went 4,000 feet. So he was going about seven. Oh, it's four hours. Yeah, it's four hours. Oh, okay. Oh, That's bad. Like so, four inches. so hold up. Let let like visualize uh, this, right? Like two feet per Seventeen second. feet is probably about from my desk to that wall. Oh, yeah. Yeah. In a minute, do you think you'd climb that far? Yeah, probably. Yeah, anyway, you'd probably climb it for a minute. Five. If all we were doing was like climbing a ladder or something. Like, that's not that far. But the other thing is, the slower you climb, the more tired you're going to get. Because, like, you're just on the wall for a long time. Um, and the other thing that's more climbing than is math, you get pumped because, and this is health also, if your arm's up here, your heart has to work really hard to get blood to your fingers. Down here, like our body's designed, Heart pumps from here, right? Okay, blood goes in. And then it kind of backs and whatever comes back up. But up here, it makes the system really hard. And the longer you're climbing, the harder it gets. So you do what's like you take a break, right? So you caught on your blair and you say, like, take, which means they take the rope and then they lock off, and you just sit. And you hang out and you get blood back in your arms. So what do you Arnold couldn't do that. He didn't have a blair. He didn't have a rope. The only breaks he could take is when he made it to a spot on the wall that he could take a break. Like imagine that four hours of continuous climbing. Well, this is not really that it yeah. slows down. There's there's a whole like special about it. He gets interviewed on like Dateline Nightly News and all this stuff. And actually, it's funny because they talk to him and they're like, "So, like, do you have a death wish, right?" Because you're. And he's like, "No, absolutely not. I envision my life with like my significant other and like us having kids and you know, like, I don't want to die at all." He says, "I just like this adventure and I like to continue to push myself." I just like having a feeling about I'm, I'm gonna die. I'm just, I just like feeling like I'm gonna die. <laughs> well, no. He, so here's the thing, though. He trains with a rope with a partner. So he had done that climb many times over. Huh. This kind of sounds like mastery in a way. Yeah, he had huh. practiced this, this skill with, 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 with the safety line yeah. of a partner resource guide maps. Yeah. Practicing and failing, like he so fell. Like right? in his head. training runs, he fell, but he had a rope. So then, in the real run, he essentially just told himself, "I can't fall." Are you saying if we fail a math test, we die? <laughs> no, because you have the safety rope on right now. But if you, like, you like, fail the ACT yeah. five times in a row, and then that's like, like yeah, then that matters. <laughs> Right, so it's like when do you have the safety of this? It's like it's like it's it's like saying it's like mastery by practicing an introduction is learning to say thing and practicing the notebook and mastery is just driving and then all the stuff on the bicycle. Why is the bicycle but on a tightrope a thousand feet in the air? Right, we will try to write All right, check this out. Forrest, love that name. Forrest was the name of like my great grandfather. Um, so Forrest needs to repaint the right side of his house because sunlight and rain have caused the paint to peel, especially depending on where you live. That's a real concern. Chris, we've been off test a lot today. I'm just asking us to do a little bit more math. So each can of paint states that it will cover 150 square feet. Yeah, sometimes you can trust that. Help Forrest decide how many cans of paint he should buy. All he knows is that his house is eight meters tall, meters, right? We're not talking feet. And then the slope of his roof is nine meters long because he had his roof redone and he knows that. Problem is, and he could just go get a tape measure, he doesn't know this. You And also doesn't really know this. Usually when you're measuring a house, isn't the roof supposed to be included? Yeah. <laughs> so no, well, okay. So this is this is a single slope roof. So we're used to in Ohio double slope because snow and everything needs to run off. But in different regions where like that's not as big of a concern and the weight of snow wouldn't matter, you can have a single slope roof. So the back of your house gets an extra floor. Like there'd be windows and like there might be a bedroom that only faces back. But the front of your house has to run the rain off. 
This is like a real design style. See, you're yeah, right. In there, we talked about the height of the house up to the peak of the roof. But his height on the front of the house is 8 meters. He doesn't know the back. He doesn't know the width. And somebody stole his tape measure. So, you all need to help him figure out what is this length, but straight line. <laughs> and what is this length, because we know that this is 8, but we need to figure out the other section. So, have at it. What function are we going to use? Neither, right? Sine or cosine, because I need two different sides. Or use both at some point, unless we use a number that we found, which is not a good idea. So if I sine. Because houses are both perpendicular to me, right? If we go from the ground and this is perpendicular and we go straight up and we draw a straight line over, um, this must be 90. Yeah. So then sine is opposite over hypotenuse. I'm going to make it an H yeah. over 9. H for height, not okay, hypotenuse, so though. Is sine is easier. So it's, it's over 9, so 9 sine 36. 9 sine 36. What does that give us? 5 Then cosine Well cosine is easy too because it's adjacent over hypotenuse. So I'm gonna go W for width of the house. So it's nine cosine thirty-six. Honestly, you can hit second entry if you're using an eighty-four like a TI of like graphing, and then you can change sine to cosine. Actually, I think you can do the same on those. I'm just not sure. I think you bump up into the problem and you can change it or something. Or you can just type it in again. Mm -hmm. Either way, what's our width come out to be? 7428. So always double check does it make sense? Yeah, because both those sides need to be less than 9. 9 hypotenuse has to be most. So then, what's our area? Boy. You already had it. Well, we're going area first. So, two different sections, or we could look at this as a trapezoid if we wanted. We could. We could average this base with this base. The, yeah, you're, you're right. <laughs> I, I'm not gonna. Yeah, you're right. Is that what you get for area? Let's have somebody else verify that. There's seven it's seven correct. point. It's 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 hold on, let me four nine. Yeah, it's, it's correct. He's, he's right. Then we can use conversion factor because, well, we're in America and we want square feet. America. Okay, so. Eight hundred what? So, and again, and I should have told us this at the beginning of this problem. We're talking about paint. These tenths and hundredths, but like none of that matters really. We could be doing approximate math because we're talking about cans of paint, right? Each one comes hundred fifty. You can't buy a quarter. Oh yeah, but you, I mean yes, but you're buying. Stop. You Wait, can't, what like, is, what is uh, like point, 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 No, they're gallons. Oh, okay. So I can yeah, guarantee a quart will not cover 150 square feet. Magic. I can guarantee it's not magic paint. So to be safe, how many cans will we buy? 835. 835. Yep. No. Excuse me? Oh, I. Six. Why? Every two cans, every two cans can cover three hundred, right? But you said if you want to be safe. No, if we want to be safe, we make this nine hundred. Or, but and we buy enough coverage for nine hundred. But like, if you want to be safe, you can take a tornado comes in, then you have extra extra tape. So you can like use it like. Like instead of sandbags, we're gonna build a barricade with paint cans. Yes. I just don't know that that will work. 
Yeah. Yes. You, no, oh, you know what would be a good idea? Dress your sandbags with flex steel. No. Yeah, so we would have to make them sandbags. You know what's that stuff actually costs? Well, it's expensive. I want to try the boat. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, cool. yeah. The boat with yeah. yeah. a screen door bottom. Like, okay. First off, who built the boat with a screen yeah. bottom? Yeah. I don't know that. Yeah. Is that, 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 was that was just a, that was was just like a demonstration. Like no, it's like, like a screen door, door and then they flex seal yeah. on it. I thought they were flex seal. Well, in Mythbusters, they make a duct tape boat. But no, on the flex seal commercial, they make it with a screen door. Like at oh, the bottom, but then they show that what would be a screen that's totally water permeable, the flex seal then makes a water impermeable barrier, is what they're trying to say. Uh, all right, that's obviously completely it. Um, if you are interested in climbing and stuff like that, did we do any climbing discovery last year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I want to use flex seal and flex tape to find out whether or not the boat is actually. <laughs> My brother has a boat. We can go poke a hole in it and start. I'll do it. I'll do it. You're fine, dude. Take some away. I'm stealing all your power. I don't think anyone seventh grade is going to mess with it. Did you do discovery day? Do you know what you could do for your discovery day? Have a wonderful day, guys. Enjoy your flex seal conversations.